Okay, it's Andy Graham of uh, Hobo Traveler. I'm in uh, Vilcabamba, Ecuador. I also have a website called My Vilcabamba. I'm in Vilcabamba's, uh, I, I got the Ask Andy show. I answer kind of global questions and a lot of life coaching questions, really. But uh, Larry S. asked me a question today. Hey, Andy, great show. I have two part, two part question. First one is, is Vilcabamba in Vilcabamba, is it easy to meet ladies there? I am viewing your videos and I see locals approaching you, including that nice, cute girl with the American shirt. I am asking you to see if, if Vilcabamba is right for me. Okay, because you also that said it is a place where old re expats retire to. And my second question is Cambodia. I know you have been there, and what, have you, what are your thoughts about it? Would you go back? Great show, Larry from Boston. Okay, so Larry in Boston is asking two questions. I'll try to break them down here. Is, is, he wants to know, in Vilcabamba, is it easy to meet ladies here? Okay, um, my answer would be this on a scale of uh, 1 to 10, this would be a 1. It's not easy to meet girls. And I, w I, want, I want to say a little, maybe a little rant here first. Um, there's nothing more natural than to want to find a wife or a mate or a girlfriend or a boyfriend. And when you guys basically act like this is the wrong type of question, the wrong type of answer, you have missed it. Because 50% of the expats that go abroad are looking for love in a way. And they're looking to reinvent themselves and they're looking to do it. Sometimes they're doing a geographical cure where they're trying to find a new life and stuff like that. And so please, don't do it. But uh, this, this community right here seems to be one of these... Um, there's a term in sociology or psychology or whatever where basically all the young people are moving away to the big city. So the, the urbanization of going to Loja or Cuenca from here means that all the locals are almost left. Now, the problem then is the second part for if you're going to date, um, you can't really date that easy, you know, the foreigners that are coming to town. The backpackers hardly ever stay more than two days. So anybody that is uh, on a long trip across Central and South America, they, they're just in and out so fast. Uh, the youngest people that are foreigners is all the people that are behind me, which are basically selling jewelry and from Argentina. Uh, basically, ellos sin futura. <laughs> okay? You can go translate. Ellos sin futura. Uh, and the expats that come here usually come here as... Uh, Married couples, and you have a lot of you have a lot of the demographics here is really weird because most of the men sort of like act like they were angry at their wife, angry at the situation, angry at America, and they came here just to hide from any kind of stress. And this is incredibly stress-free place to live if you don't get into conversations <laughs> with some of the the ranting people here. But uh, I mean, it's a very calm place, a very safe place. But as far as coming here to meet girls. Absolutely the wrong place on the planet. Okay, I, I don't, there's, the local girls would all be under 18, and uh, I mean that girl, but on the weekends they came in here, and that, that's why it was humusing to me, because on the weekend we get a lot of people from Boja, a lot of kids come, and they come just for the weekend, a group of kids, and they're all like 20 years old, or younger, and I really have no idea how old that girl in the, in the uh, American flag shirt was. It's, an, it's a video about, I don't know, 15 back maybe, but um, Cambodia, what's my thoughts on Cambodia? Cambodia was like a more confusing version of Thailand, uh, so Thailand's very organized, it's, Thailand's one of the best places on the planet, it's like in a way, it's like a first world country at, uh, you know, underdeveloped country prices, so you can real, live in China. Thailand really cheap. Um, what's sad is Cambodia also has the sex tourism, so a lot of the sex tourism is moving over there, and they have some really creepy stuff in Thailand. Some really creepy. I mean, get off a thing. So I mean, I didn't like the fact that in Cambodia, I was in a. But I, I haven't been there for about five or six years, and these things change. I heard Sihanoukville, which is on the ocean has grown a but there's a lot of violence in these cities and I don't I mean in, in Cambodia there's a lot more violence and less controls and a lot more corruption so 
And then Laos is, I'll, I'll compare Laos. Laos, uh, basically, it's illegal for a woman in Laos to date a foreigner. So it's really difficult to meet girls in Laos. So if you want to meet girls, that's the wrong place. I've been to Laos, and I really enjoyed that country because it's uh, kind of relaxing after Thailand because uh, there's always this boom boom thing going on. But Cambodia is a pretty good country. I mean, it's, it's on the way to Vietnam and it's a transition point so they got a lot of travelers coming through there and it's you know it's a what do you call it it's a uh, kind of a I don't think it's a socialist social, social, <laughs> I can't talk today guys socialist country and they, they do have seem to have a little bit of spies going on and a little bit of uh, everybody's shutting up it's really political but uh, that's your fire truck, guys. Uh, I like Cambodia in a way, but I, I didn't really feel it, it's not the quality and cleanliness of Thailand. And but a lot of the uh, Pattaya boys, which I've never really been in Pattaya, make trips over to Cambodia, then come back. And so they're constantly doing this visa run thing, but all the countries are tightening up on their visas and making it so that they basically want you to be a long-term person in the country as opposed to short-term. But to me, I'm not going to get a residence visa. I'm not going to do any of this stuff because at the end of the day, I know that 99% of the uh, people that go live abroad actually go home within seven years. So. But I love, I, I like Cambodia, and it's a good country to go through. But I mean, you can make a trip from Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, and then like fly back. It's kind of a nice trip where you can fly up to Hanoi and do it. But uh, it's definitely full of the same kind of uh, boom boom girl situation as as uh, Thailand. Um, Sihanoukville is on the ocean. Phnom Penh is a big city. It's kind of a French colony city. So I went way up north in Cambodia on these roads, and I, I went into some way off the beaten path up north into Cambodia, and uh, it's uh, quite fun. They were, I think they were, the police were actually poaching uh, teak wood there. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but uh, you know, if you're in Thailand, it's it's not easy. In fact, there's Thai Airways fly. There's a, there's a, like a cheap. $60, $70 flight from Bangkok to uh, Phnom Penh, so you can skip all the the thing. The, the skinny is is that the road between Cambodia and Thailand is actually bad because the airlines have been paying to make sure that the governments don't fix them. <laughs> okay, so but I could go on and on and on. But uh, slow travel, you know, one really good just go into Thailand, stay stay as long as you want, go to Sihanoukville, go to Phnom Penh, hang around in some of the hotels and they got all sorts of crazy things going on and uh, it's, uh, it's, it's a different place. Then go on to Vietnam, you can get your visa to Vietnam and Cambodia, then go on to Vietnam and then fly back. But uh, I truly recommend that any of these three, three country people, when I say three country people, you got people that go Thailand, Philippines, Thailand, Philippines, you know, they, they, they do three countries. Um, if you really want to understand all these countries, give yourself a break and actually see the world and go to many countries. Laos, Cambodia, I mean, these are all interesting countries. And uh, it opens up your mind, okay, and it takes away your delusions. Uh, one thing interesting in Laos and Cambodia, you're going to get there, you're going to see a lot of history for the Vietnam War, and you'll realize that the North Vietnamese were actually in Laos bombing into South uh, Vietnam is in like, hey, we're in a place where you can't bomb us back. It's really quite funny. Ho Chi Minh Trail is really hilarious when you finally realize that they did this thing of working their way around the DMZ. Basically, they came down and went into the other country where they, we couldn't bomb and then we're bombing into an America, into South Vietnam. It's a real uh, Charlie Fox track. But have fun. Thanks for the question. And love is natural, guys. We can